In our last video, we manipulated the Schrodinger equation for the quantum harmonic oscillator into this form. So now let's go about solving it. So what are solutions to a differential equation that this looks like? Well, uh, the first thing you could do is you could try putting it in a computer. Um, in this particular case, it's not going to be helpful. Um, and in general, it's not very helpful. Um, a computer will spit out some things that aren't really recognizable. Um, and so instead, we're going to use some tricks. So here's one trick. We know that the wave function must go to zero as x is large. Well, x is pretty much the same thing as c, so as c is large. So let's take the limit of c much, much greater than k, or really we should be talking about square root of k. So c much, much greater than the square root of k. Then d squared psi dc squared is approximately c squared psi. Uh, well, you can find solutions to that. It's not super obvious, but you can find that solutions are a e to the minus one half c squared plus b e to the plus one half c squared. Uh, if you don't believe it, you could check it. Uh, they are indeed solutions. We should also set b equal to zero because the uh, b not equal to zero would cause the wave function to blow up at infinity and minus infinity, and we don't want that. So we know that the wave function for large c will look something like a e to the minus one half c squared. Okay, how does that help us? Well, here's the next trick. So the next trick is we're going to make a guess then for the wave function. We're gonna say the wave function is some other function times e to the minus one half c squared. And we're then going to try and figure out what that other function h of c is. Um, so we're gonna plug that into our Schrodinger's equation that we rewrote. So this version of the Schrodinger's equation. It's going to give us an equation for h. Hopefully it'll be easier to solve than the equation we have for psi. That's the game. Okay, so we need to take derivatives of this. So the first derivative with respect to c gives me a derivative with respect to h. And uh, there's a term where the derivative hits the exponent and brings down a c. The Schrodinger's equation has a second derivative of psi with respect to c. And so I have to take another derivative. And so this gets kind of messy really quickly. I get a second derivative of h. Um, I get two terms where I only have a first derivative of h. Um, I get a term where uh, I take a derivative of the c multiplying the h up above. And then I get another term where the derivative hits the exponent and nothing else. OK, so I'm just going to call second derivatives h prime double prime and first derivatives h prime to make our lives a little easier. Okay, so our differential equation from above now becomes, plugging in for the second derivative of psi, uh, I get this expression. I promise this is going to come out much better. It doesn't look like it right now. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have c squared times psi minus k times psi. I immediately notice I could cancel some terms. That's kind of nice. I can cancel these two terms. And there's a common factor of the exponent everywhere, so I'll cancel that out. OK, so this can be rewritten in a slightly cleaner form. It's h double prime minus 2c h prime plus k minus 1 h is equal to 0. Um, is this really any better? It still doesn't look like a differential equation we know how to solve. Well, hang on a second. Let's compare this to a differential equation that we have seen before, or hopefully have seen before. Uh, let's compare it to the differential equation for Hermite polynomials. So we'll look up the differential equation for Hermite polynomials. It's h double prime minus 2xc h prime plus 2n, where n is an integer, times h of xc is equal to 0. Hey, wait, that's the same differential equation. So that's cool. So that what that means that our solutions to our differential equation are Hermite polynomials. So the h of c that we started with are really the Hermite polynomials, h sub n of c. Remember Hermite polynomials, so h0 is just 1. h1 is 2 c should be. h2 should be 4 should be c squared minus 2 and so on and so forth are the polynomials. Notice also that this is an integer here, 2n is an integer. 
the corresponding part for our equation is k minus 1. So that tells us that the allowed energies for our system are when k minus 1 is equal to 2 times an integer. Well, remember k was our dimensionless energy, 2e over h bar omega. So we can rearrange this to find the allowed energies, e sub n. And those are h bar omega times n plus 1 half. So we found the quantized energies. Uh, this also tells us that the ground state is n equal to 0 for the harmonic oscillator. So e sub 0 is h bar omega over 2. And then the higher energy levels, e sub n, go like n instead of n squared, as they did for the infinite square well. OK, so let's summarize. We found solutions to the quantum harmonic oscillator. These solutions took the form psi sub n of x is some a sub n, hn of xi, e to the minus 1 half xi squared where a sub n are a set of normalization constants. The hn of c are Hermite polynomials. And you can just look up the Hermite polynomials in a table. And this c that keeps showing up is related to x by the factor of the square root of m omega over h bar. OK, so let's come back to how we started things. Let's look at the ground state wave function, psi 0 which is a0, h0, e to the minus 1 half c squared. Well, that's just e to the minus 1 half m omega over h bar x squared. So let's sketch a plot of what that would look like. So here's psi versus x. And so the ground state wave function will look something like this, peaked in the middle, and then it decays as we go to infinity. And that's roughly what we expected originally. Psi 1, the first excited state, looks like a1, h1 of c, e to the minus 1 half c squared. Remember, h1 of c was 2x, or 2c in this case. So we replace for x everywhere. We substitute in x and for c. And so our first excited state, if you plot it, will look something like this. Again, roughly what we expected. So that's the quantum harmonic oscillator. Uh, in future videos, we'll look at a clever way of solving the harmonic oscillator in, uh, in a different way, a little less direct of a way.